Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, I, I, I want to pay tribute to the campaigners, indeed, in particular to my constituent, Bill Skidmore, who has sent a great deal of information to MSPs in advance uh, of this evening's debate. Uh, it certainly made for some interesting reading, uh, I can assure them of that. My colleague Kevin Stewart, I think, has very uh, helpfully focused uh, on the issues around the business plan uh, or lack thereof uh, and the questions that arise off the back of that. I want to look at some of the wider impacts and risks that I think this development poses. But I can't allow some of the, the things that Lewis MacDonald said to go unchecked and unchallenged. First of all, uh, I think most people would accept and agree that the redevelopment of Marshall College has been a fantastic benefit to the city of Aberdeen. And if Lewis MacDonald's view if Lewis, if Lewis MacDonald's view is that any capital expenditure should be viewed as a millstone or a risk, then it's a wonder that anything ever gets developed in the city of Aberdeen, such as new school buildings, for example, at tens of millions of pounds, if Lewis MacDonald believes that we shouldn't be making tens of millions of pounds of investment uh, because of the potential debt that arises. Now, I've got, I've got more to come to yet. And then, and then Lewis MacDonald, uh, well, just, just a second, let me develop further. And then Lewis MacDonald, uh, turns around and says that, uh, of course, the uh, local government committee have spoken about using pension funds for infrastructure investment. It's something I've spoken about as well, particularly public pension funds and especially public pension funds. But also the idea that pension funds who invest uh, then recoup the reward over time rather than simply transferring the burden of risk for that investment onto the local authority itself, which is what is happening in these circumstances. And then he says that uh, the local government committee have said council should not be overly risk averse. There's a difference, a fundamental difference between not being risk averse and being essentially blind or ignorant of risk. And that appears to be a dividing line that the Labour-led admin, Labour administration in Aberdeen have fallen off of quite spectacularly. I'll give way. Lewis MacDonald. I'm grateful, I'm grateful to Mr MacDonald. Clearly, Audit Scotland have not regarded the handling of this as either blind or ignorant. But if Mr MacDonald is suggesting that in some way Aberdeen City Council should cease to seek an income from Marshall Square, can he tell us how else he, he would have Aberdeen City Council pay off the debt accrued at Marshall College? Mark MacDonald. Well, one of the things which Aberdeen City Council ought to have done, first and foremost, is to have had a much more open and transparent process from the beginning, looking at the views of Aberdonians around the options that they wanted to see being developed, and then examined how those could have been delivered. I'm pretty sure what is currently being developed would not have been top of any of the... Uh, considerations. One of the other things which Aberdeen City Council did erroneously was to uh, vote against the wishes of the group that I was a member of uh, to demolish the building itself and un incur the costs around the de de demolition of St Nicholas House to the council with no guarantee of what would come after, therefore taking an upfront cost with no guarantee of future income. That was a, a, another example of carelessness uh, in the face of risk assessment. But I want to look at some of the wider issues here, uh, presiding officer, in terms of wider impact and risk, because Union Street, the flagship street uh, in the city of Aberdeen at the moment, needs support, it needs investment, it needs a specific strategic approach. And what I fail to see at the moment coming forward is any sign of such a strategic approach. Indeed, it seems to be that development uh, and proposed development in and around the city centre is designed almost to prevent the recovery of Union Street rather than to assist the recovery of Union Street. And Marshall Square will be another part of that process, uh, uh, another part of that problem in relation to Union Street, because that is a financial impact as well. Now, the opportunities are coming to the Council, and Lewis MacDonald, as he is now so keen uh, on Aberdeen City Council not being risk averse, I'm sure will join with the calls that have been made by my colleague Councillor Jackie Dunbar for Aberdeen City Council to look to use the new powers that are being given to it in relation to business rates to look at uh, impact, look at a targeted approach to business rate reduction on Union Street to encourage independent retailers onto Union Street. 
That should be coupled as well, I believe, with a view of looking at how the upper levels of Union Street buildings could be utilised better, for example, conversion to flats and, uh, and other properties, which would enable, first of all, provision of accommodation within the centre of Aberdeen, but also reduce the space of buildings that are being let to retailers and enable those smaller independent retailers who exist in areas such as Rose Street and Thistle Street, for example, to perhaps be encouraged onto Union Street you with greater to exposure, to close, greater footfall. That's the kind of approach that we want to be seen being taken in our city centre, not what is being done at Marshall Square at the moment, which is an opportunity only, it seems, for chain retailers who don't have a local presence to come in, set up shop in Aberdeen and potentially divert business away from some of these smaller independent retailers rather than an opportunity to enhance and promote them. That, for me, is one of the great shames about this.